Jeremy, you can't resist talking about me, about me. I'm starting to think that you're in love with me. <laughs> and just know that I'm in love with you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we broke them. We broke them. <laughs> Welcome back to Strong Man Personal Finance. My name is Christopher Belly. I'm a certified CPA accountant. I'm a fake Boglehead investor. I'm author of the book Stop Being a Broke Loser. It's on Amazon. And I am joining the absolute destruction of the brand that is Jeremy Lafave. And by association, Financial Fortress, a disgusting enterprise. Now, in this leaked video from Jer Jeremy's private course group, and I got it from YouTube, Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy gives his thoughts on Tattooed Chef. And you can tell the guy, even though he's upbeat on his channel, and he's out there flexing his gains, even though they're high heavily manipulated, and he's concealing massive losses. But, you know, he wouldn't do something like that, right? He seems absolutely defeated and deflated. But we need to listen to the logic about why Jeremy Lafave bought Tattooed Chef. And you're going to see what a massive clown he is. <laughs> you had this coming, boy. I've been bashing you for a year and a half. And I'm finally getting my day in the sun. And I'm loving it. Every second of it. Let's watch this elite video. You know, with the chef... You know, obviously in this situation, um, obviously, you know, I, everything's out there as far as on YouTube and whatnot, on what I got excited about, the growth for the company, the growth for the brand, obviously the plant-based food movement, which obviously took a huge step back in 2022 for whatever reason. That is what it is. I don't think that's likely a lasting reason, but it is what happened, right? Okay, first thing, Jeremy, the plant-based movement. People vote with their wallets. People can have principles and beliefs and, oh my God, I'm so liberal and amazing and I'm going to eat only soy boy food and I'm not going to harm any cows and blah, 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 blah. But when their pocketbooks get squeezed by inflation, when the economy goes to crap and people start losing their jobs, every dollar counts. And the last thing they're going to do is buy this type of food. This was predictable. We generated so much money. We showered people with money. We cut interest rates to zero. Of course we were going to have inflation. And it came rapidly, unsurprisingly. And what happened? Once inflation hit, people changed their consumption habits. And there should have been an indicator with how the market was behaving. We had a global lockdown because of you know what. And oh my God, stocks went to the moon. Everything was in a massive bubble fueled by child tax credits, stimulus checks, and generous unemployment benefits. And now that that's gone away and we have inflation, the fast food or the, uh, the soy boy food industry is running into trouble now, isn't it, Jeremy? And um, when, it, when it came to the chef, it's just a massive growth, an epic brand just building out so fast. And... Everything played out, you know, so far in that story, exactly how I thought it was going to be in terms of getting into retailers and expansion, all those things. But the, the obviously the component that hasn't come together and, you know, I hope it comes together. I really do. <laughs> I don't know if he's acting in this video or not, but honestly, I, I think he's defeated because he has such an ego. From Tesla stock, which he'll mention in a second. He has such an ego that he cannot believe that he made such a devastating decision where he has lost over a million dollars in Tattooed Chef. Jeremy, I feel bad for you, man. And if you listen to how he describes this, he's a story investor. The only thing that seems to matter to him is the story. If the story sounds good, he'll buy the stock at whatever price. It doesn't matter what the underlying financials look like. If the story is good, he's in. And that is not how you invest. If you're going to buy individual stocks, which I don't recommend you do unless it's 5% of your portfolio or less, you need to do a lot more due diligence than the story is good. 
um, is obviously the financial side, the margins and just everything, just the disaster on the, on the financial front, right? And even the balance sheet's now in a very weak place. When I first started buying into the chef, the balance sheet was amazing. Amazing. They had cash loads so big you couldn't, you know, it might touch a touch a 747 up there or something, man. You when when I when I was getting in that stock in, in you know building out that position, especially in late 2021, like look at their balance sheet back then. It was incredible how much money they had. And now to see them in a weakened balance sheet position is just like, you know adds insult to injury in, in this whole situation to be like, geez, you guys blew through that much money and um in that whole situation. I mean it was inevitable. They had such terrible margins. Of course they were going to burn through money. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not editing that out. Of course they were going to burn through money. And you could see the massive destruction of cash. I could literally pull up a uh, quarterly comparison report of their balance sheet and show the cash balance going down by 15, 20 million every single quarter. If you're not making money, you're going to burn a lot of cash. And once all your cash is gone, you got to go into debt, weakening the balance sheet, which is, I guess, the only thing he cares about. It's the balance sheet, bro. You're going to go into debt or you're going to have to dilute. And the dilution's coming. You'll see. I think the lesson learned with a chef is at the end of the day, if it's an unprofitable company, you can't bet big on it. The the sin I made with the chef is I bought extremely heavy and unprofitable company. Likely to compensate for the fact that I didn't go heavy enough in Tesla when they were an unprofitable company. Exactly. I've been saying this the whole time. He was corrupted by his returns on Tesla. And when he invested in Tesla... I would say that was actually a responsible decision. He put like, what, 20, 30K in Tesla? Okay, small speculative bet. But he's 100% right. If you have a massively unprofitable share diluting trash company, the last thing you want to do is put the majority of your portfolio in it. Now, the sad thing is, this is the financial expert that you were paying to help you avoid those types of pit pitfalls. Instead, what you get is a freaking pity party him complaining to you, crying to you about how he lost a bunch of money. But in reality, he led you to the slaughterhouse. This is unbelievable to me that this guy can go on here, whine about his investment performance, and people watch him and keep paying him. It's incredible. And therefore, I'm down over a million dollars on the chef. Over a million dollars. And... Um, You know, that just, that, that sucks. Maybe overconfidence, you know, like what leads to that? Maybe overconfidence from Tesla leads to, you know, not only buying into an unprofitable company. And the thing with the chef is, I looked at them and I'm like, yeah, they're unprofitable, but it's a food company. Like they'll get to profitability, you know, fairly soon, right? And, um, what made you get to that conclusion? Yeah, they're a food company, but their gross margin was way below all other comparative companies by a long shot, by pretty significant amount. It is much harder for Tattoo Chef to ever become profitable forever into the future with such an insanely gross, low gross margin. I don't know what else to tell you, LaFufu. He's the perfect example of somebody that got lucky on a stock, took that as I'm a genius, and then just went absolutely insane. This is why I say you should buy index funds. Because at the end of the day, you might get lucky on a stock. And God help you if you get lucky when you're young. You think you're a genius. You repeat that degenerate behavior later on in your life. And all of a sudden, you lose everything. But at least in his case, he has a course. Which I guess people are still paying for. And he's still got his YouTube channel. I wish I had that backstop. I mean, I make some money on YouTube, but holy crap, I don't have the money to gamble on Tattooed Chef, throw in a million, two million dollars. <laughs> it's unbelievable. 
you know, obviously it's just the furthest thing from that as of right now. We'll see what happens here in the future, but as of right now, that's where things stand. So if there's one takeaway from me moving forward is if I'm going to bet on a company that is losing money, bet small. I bet way too big on a company that was losing money. And now I'm paying for that massively with a seven figure mistake, seven figures. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think, you know, moving forward, if I'm going to buy an unprofitable company, I got to bet small. And that's what I did with Tesla. You know, I never Tesla, you know, back when I was buying that, I don't even know if Tesla was a top five position. If it was, it was maybe the fourth or the fifth biggest, you know, back in those days. Obviously, the only reason Tesla became such a big, huge uh, position in the public account, for instance, is because it went up so much. It wasn't like I put in some insane amount. Exactly. Tesla is carrying, carrying his account. But, oh, he's a genius, apparently. So, at the end of the day, I mean, this is a lesson that you should not pay financial YouTubers for a freaking course. When at the end of the day, they're going to lose money. They're going to go on here and have a little pity party and tell you how they made a mistake when they were supposed to be the ones that told you how to properly invest. Max your tax advantage accounts and buy broadly diversified index funds. And if you want to play around with individual stocks, dedicate 5% of your portfolio to have fun with. And if you do that, you're probably going to end up a lot better than this massive clown right here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful night. Cheers!